how to take your Nintendo 64 from this to this. Let's do a quick overview before we get started. This is the N64 with an N64 gamepad. You can see on the back there's a slot for the memory card. There are two Z buttons, left and right. And then here we have a power supply. Up top is the spot for your cartridge. And this is a car backup camera. All these extra parts can be sourced on Amazon. I had to disassemble some of this to make the tutorial, so sorry for the mess. Up here we have our LCD screen. You can get that on Amazon for about 15 bucks. This is the joystick and the buttons from the N64 controller. This is the N64 motherboard. Underneath the motherboard, we have our cartridge port. You have to desolder this from the board and run all these wires. And then underneath that is the N64 controller PCB. You probably noticed there was no batteries. You could certainly add them. I'm just using wall power. I designed this case in Fusion 360. You could certainly make it look a lot better by sanding it and painting it. Although, I'd say this is much better than life before 3D printers. Look at this one. Car Bondo and a Sega Genesis. Yikes. But with that being said, once you figure out how to make this, make this, or any other portable pre-Nintendo 64 with the same methods. All right, let's get started. First thing you need to do is remove the expansion pack. Then you need to remove the case. Removing the case is a little bit harder than you expect though, because they have security screws. You can buy the screwdriver online or use a Dremel like I did. I used a circular tool to cut right along the side here to cut the screws out. You could probably drill it out too if you wanted to. Once you have the case open, you're gonna see a bunch of this heat shielding on top. You can go ahead and remove all of it. At the front of your board, you're gonna see all your controller connections. We're gonna to have to remove those, either a Dremel or the pair of snips. The leads are pretty thick on them. Next, you're gonna to wanna to remove the power and video connectors from the board. You can Dremel it off, desolder, or snip, whatever your preference is. Next, we'll remove the power button and then solder wires to keep the system always on. We'll do the same with the reset button over here. Because we removed the heat shield earlier, we should upgrade the heat sinks. This, to this, and use thermal paste. I salvaged these from an old PC, and then I used a Dremel to cut them to size. My case as slim as possible. I sawed off the top part of the expansion pack with the Dremel. Be careful doing this, it creates a lot of dust, so wear a mask while doing it and work in a ventilated area. While cutting this, you want to be very careful not to cut any of these components or traces. The next couple steps involve relocating the cartridge port. You're going to have to desolder this from the PCB, wire leads from the PCB to the cartridge port, and then on the back side, before we even do any of that, we have to remove the expansion slot. There's quite a bit to desolder in this project, so let's talk about a couple options. One, there's a desoldering braid. Do is you dip this into a ton of flux, like this. I call it earwax. And then you put it onto your PCB with your soldering iron and heat it up, and the flux draws the solder onto the solder wick. I haven't had a lot of good experience with this. There's also a desoldering pump. This is where you put the soldering iron on the lead, put the pump over it, and then press the button. This one was better than this one, but save the most time is get yourself an electronic soldering pump. So this heats up the, the solder, and then you press this button here and sucks it up. Makes life very easy. So for example, you would take your desoldering iron, place it over the lead, and then pump the solder out. If the solder is not flowing, you can use flux to help the solder flow. Once you desolder the cartridge port from the motherboard, you're going to want to remember the orientation. The numbers on the front mean the cartridge port goes that way. Then, from there, you're going to want to take a wire from the PCB up to the cartridge port. It's a one-to-one -one ratio throughout. I think it's about 48 pins you have to solder. I use 28 AWG braided Silicone wire, it's flexible, you can move it around. What happens when you use thicker wire? This will not bend as nice and not move where you need it to go. So a higher gauge than that is not recommended for this build. If you don't have the silicone wire, you could also use the wire from your controller. Here's some tips to make this process a little bit easier. You're gonna pull the jacket off, 
You're gonna twist wire. You're gonna dip it in the flux. Then you're gonna take your soldering iron and tin the tip. Next, you're gonna put flux down here, and then you're gonna solder one end to the wire to this pad here by applying heat with your soldering iron to the pad and to the wire at the same time. I also recommend getting a set of tweezers. This helps immensely with this detailed work. Another recommendation is to put heat shrink along these pins here to stop any sort of interference. Remember that huge power brick in the back of the N64? Well, this is what we're replacing it with. This is a DC to DC buck converter. It takes an input voltage and then outputs a different voltage. And you can set that voltage with the potentiometer. This is the power plug that we'll be using. Here's a simple wiring diagram of the DC DC buck converter. You can see we have the power 7.5 volts going to the N64 and to the LCD. We need the full power to go into those. On the other side, you can see the buck converter doing its business, dropping it down to 3.3. One side is going to be connecting to our audio amp and the other one to the N64. The Nintendo 64 takes two voltages. A word of caution about this chip. This chip should not be operated without a load attached. Maybe you have a, a broken PCB, an old LED component that could handle the 7.5 or 3.3 voltages. You should attach a load to this first before adjusting this potentiometer. This is the power supply that I use. You can select different voltages. And for this project, I have 7.5 volts selected. I have 7.5 volts selected because of the LCD monitor that I'm using. The N64 can take up to 12 volts. Now that you have your power supply connected and your load connected, take your multimeter leads and connect them as well. Set it at DCV and then adjust this screw until you get 3.3 volts. Okay, now to connect the power. First, you're gonna take your ground wire and then connect it to pin five. Then you're gonna take your 7.5 volt and then connect it to pin six. You see here that it can take 12 volts. So if your monitor requires more power, you can put more power through here. Now, be sure to adjust your DC-DC buck converter to still output 3.3 volts. Speaking of 3.3 volts, you're going to take the 3.3 volt line and then connect it to pin 3. Speaking of monitors, this is the back of the LCD screen I have. So this is the ground, and this red line here is power. That's our 7.5 volts. And on my monitor, it's labeled. To wrap up the power section of this build, you're going to connect the 3.3 volt lines to VCC and ground on your audio amplifier. Speaking of the audio amp, this is how you wire it up. I'm using a potentiometer for volume control and a 5 pin 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now, I should warn you, this amp is pretty loud even though it's a headphone jack. This is just one way to tackle the audio issue. There are plenty of ways to do it. You could add speakers, you could add different amplifiers all to make the audio quality better, but for me, this is good enough. All right, now let's connect it to the N64. I'm gonna grab one wire, connect it to the left, and another wire, connect it to right, and then you're gonna take ground and connect it to the grounding strip right here. Luckily, doing video is super easy. Take a wire, connect it to this pin right here, and then connect the other end to the AV pin on your monitor. That's it. So we have power, video and audio all connected up. Next thing we need to do is set up the controller. After you remove the case from the controller, you'll see this PCB. This one I've modified and tried different things with, but you can still get the concept. Biggest thing that you're gonna need to do is relocate these buttons because this board is gonna sit underneath your motherboard. So you need to lengthen the wires and we're gonna wire new buttons on. Okay, to illustrate this, this is the new tack button that we're gonna be using. You take the, the data line right here and then connect that to the data line on the A button. And then on the opposite side, we have common ground going to each button all the way around. And that can connect to just some common ground point on the controller. There's a couple of them, but here's one right there. I just want to show you all the data lines. We have A, down, right, up, left, B for Bravo. We have the start button right there. And then up here we have the right trigger. And then down, down here we have Z right there. On the left side, left trigger. And then these are for the D-pad, up, down, left, right. 
This is where the joystick connects to the controller. You want to cut the wires about up here, and then you're going to have to extend them. Do not forget the order of the wires. There's one white one, and then the rest are gray. Make sure you take a photo of that before you cut the wires. These are the gamepad buttons. For best results, I recommend putting a little bit of hot glue in the back. As you see, these tactile switches have smaller footprints. This step is completely optional. I have the joystick wires and all the buttons, and then the common ground connected to these male header pins. This allows me to separate the top from the base pretty easily. Here you can see the female header side right there, where all the pins connect. And then I have all the data pins going to the data lines, and then connecting down to the joystick behind the controller, left and right trigger, and then the Z button there. Last step we have here is to connect the controller wires to the controller port. So we have the power right there, the red and black, and then the white is our signal line. So let's put it all together. Here we are connecting the 3.3 power and ground lines. Now we're connecting the ground line for the audio and then the left and right audio lines. Guys, thank you so much for watching this. I hope you learned something from it. I learned all this by trial and error and watching tutorials on YouTube. I ruined three Nintendo 64s making them. But once you get it down, you can make more portables. It's the same process for a Sega Genesis, NES, Super Nintendo. All right, here it is all put back together. We're going to be playing Super Mario 64, one of my favorite games. Plug in our 7.5 volts in there. There we go. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, I stream every Wednesday and Saturday on Twitch at NiceBrew. Hope to see you there. Thanks again for watching the video. Take care.